Alright guys, so uh, welcome back to another Destiny Lightfall video here. Um, yesterday, uh, well rather the last video, I'm not sure if these are going to go back to back, uh, but regardless, the first jump in of Lightfall, I waited, uh, you know, till roughly a week and a half after it initially launched um, to jump in. Uh, obviously, there have been a lot of updates, a lot of opinions floating around, and you know, in general, uh, I like to formulate my own opinion about things, um, you know, uh, just because everybody seems to hold near and dear as one opinion is the only valid opinion, I do not uh, prescribe to that philosophy. Uh, I very much uh, kind of like to take my own stand on things, and yeah, jumping in, I really, really enjoyed it, um, but uh, in today's video, I didn't want to jump right into gameplay necessarily so much as I wanted to drill in a little bit about just some of the key changes, features, and functions, uh, so if you, as I, are jumping in not right at launch day, but just a little bit behind, uh, you'll have kind of a pretty clear idea of exactly what's going on and where to look to get started. Um, so the first thing that I want to point out, I'm just going to open the director. Uh, here's our new area. It's Neptune. If you've been following the story up to this point, you knew that it was going to be Neptune. Uh, but regardless, this is the new world. So I am going to be starting by just hovering over the map here. And it'll be pretty obvious. When you first stomp in, you are going to land up here at the Strider's Gate landing zone. That is where they start you. You will have the vault and your post box right there. And then there is this quest giver, active quest giver, who also is one of the uh, functions like a vendor where you can level up and gain reputation and all that with them. Uh, you'll see over here, um, this is related to the campaign. Up here, there is a brand new raid, uh, which is awesome. I am very much looking forward to jumping into that. In fact, I still needed to jump into the last two that they dropped. Uh, but regardless, um, over here on the side, uh, this is just your difficulty campaigns, kind of quick access tab. Uh, yes, even though I'm a solo uh, main story player, I am playing on the legendary difficulty. It's just, it's more fun to have more of a challenge and the loot that you get for it is too hard to pass up. We of course have some alternate other taps. Now this will look very much kind of uh, like these other little banners on the other worlds, but in here it'll tell you that you have to progress further. So I really only did just the first basic mission. Um, it's worth noting that uh, there is a fair bit of exploration you can do up inside of this building. And uh, Osiris has a point of interest up here directly to his left in this very nice but mostly empty looking building you kind of have to jump up walk all the way to the back of the hall and hang it right uh one of the other characters in the game of the neptunians he also functions like a vendor out front like uh the cloud strider over here uh you'll notice obviously we still have um lost sectors on the map to be explored and completed i have not explored beyond that point uh, over here is another part of campaign uh, that is locked out because you have to complete X to get it unlocked. Obviously, you're seeing it tells you recommended power. That's quite a bit of grinding up from where I am. I think I'm sitting around 1630, give or take, uh, just like over here. Uh, here is another little thing it tells us about. Um, haven't checked this out yet, but it'll be great because it tells us what rewards are over there so we can pick up some exotic gear, some of the new subclass strand related items that we will need obviously there are uh, world events public events that pop that anybody can freely explore and travel and then here is another one but they tell us that we have to get to the vendor to unlock so in general um, it's a very cool looking area it's certainly among the most unique looking uh, set and settings in the game but uh, that's just the few things I wanted to point out so just to make your life a little simpler, I am going to drill in. That's the overview on the map. But at least when you first start and you're getting the first kind of quest giver stuff in the game, I'm going to show you exactly where I'm talking about. It is relatively obvious, but in case you like start jumping down off the ledge or down the hole, um, it'll make sense when you see it. But I am going to point that out, and then we're going to get back on to the next topic. Because there's some pretty big important ones in this that I caught. Okay, so this is where you spawn in, right up here. The vault and the post box right next to you here. There's a hollow projector 
for picking up things after missions. Indeed, it's telling me I can already interact, so there's going to be some new stuff. Uh, you'll see this is the start point for the campaign, which shows up with that banner on the map. This is uh, one of our vendors up here. His name is Nimbus. You'll see he's got all sorts of stuff, rep rank. We can pick up bounties, etc., etc., etc. But they do tell us that we need to go further down the story before we can do that. But he is one of multiple. Um, this giant door behind you uh this is where you can get to osiris they call this the hall of heroes i believe so you walk in and then you jump up here and then from in here you just keep running all the way to the back it's very pretty um they made a very nice aesthetic design uh but it's all but empty until you get all the way to the back of the hall just keep running just keep running and then you enter the hall of heroes proper pop in this door and over here on the right this is Osiris's hangout, and this is, I forget his name, uh, but he does function like another vendor in the game. Now, right now, uh, he's not, because I have to continue down the quest line, but I did see that he functions as a vendor just like Nimbus out front. So just know that they're back here, and they'll guide you through. So if you set a waypoint to Osiris after you finish the first introduction mission, um, you're going to catch it, but just in case you don't, and you get turned around or lost in this new world, uh, that's where we're talking about. So I don't need to run all the way out. What I am going to do is point out the next thing. Uh, they will tell you this when you first jump in and they're popping up, you know, quick information about changes that they made. They do have uh, two new aspects on the Solar, Arc, and Void subclasses, and you do still pick those up from Ikora Ray at the Tower, so don't forget to do that. Um, assuming you have the money, they're 25000 each, so you'll need a total of 150000 obviously, to pick them all up. Glimmer only, and she is always going to be over here by the Bazaar anyway. Where is it? Uh, Ikora, right there. You can fast travel there, you can fast travel there and walk over, uh, but you you can purchase them directly from her it's a new tab on the very end of each of the aspects and then you interact with that weird little round thing to the right of Ikora over there uh, where you purchase them so uh, don't forget to do that um, they are actually pretty cool sounding I haven't set them up yet but there are new ones on all three of the classes um, so solar arc and arc and void nothing for stasis i do not have strand unlocked yet though we do get a test of it in the opening part of the um gameplay the very opening story kind of mission that we do when we jump into lightfall um now if you didn't catch it uh, over here on the left i mentioned this in the last video but if you're skipping that one and you're just looking for kind of you know what's new over here this loadout this is incredible uh you tap over and you can save any of the loadouts that you set on your character so i made a base one and you can edit it on the fly as well so equip or overwrite or preview um and it'll kind of show you all the stuff you have in full detail including the mods on your equipment um or uh you can swap between any other that you set up so it doesn't really matter if i said overwrite it would just allow me to completely delete it and start from scratch. But right now we have the option, uh, at least I do, to put up six completely separate loadouts, which I am going to do. So this is hugely powerful. If there's a specific, hey, for this campaign, this is what I want to roll. You know, this is one that I like to use on raids, or this specific raid, or this specific dungeon. Here's, you know, a few different PvP loadouts I want to do. It doesn't matter. You can completely customize all of it. The mods in your gear, the mods in your weapons, your subclass type, and just save it over there. Uh, on that hot bar that is a very welcome change um used to always be able to do that through third party uh kind of providers on your computer but now it's built in the game that is a very very welcome addition in my opinion uh the next thing that is obvious to point out again i mentioned this in the last video but if you did not catch it one of the major changes is they took away the subclass specific types on all of the armor so, you know, you were relegated to constantly having to burn through uh, consumables to swap around the type if there was armor that you wanted to keep because of its stats, but you needed to be able on the build you were making to have it on that specific class type to get access to those specific mods. That is no longer a thing. All of the subclass types are off. 
So any of these pieces, you have immediate access to all of the mods of that piece type that you've unlocked and have free reign to slot them in at will. Um, so you will notice when you're scrolling through that there are quite a lot of new mods. Uh, just take your time, go through them. Some of them are the same, they just have new icons, but there are a lot of new mods from which to choose. So I do recommend, uh, you know, take at least 15, 20 minutes on all of the armor pieces and go through them and just look at them and read what they do. Then you can start kind of figuring out, aha, that's kind of what I want to put on this build. And of course, it could take a little longer since we have the option to save multiple different builds, uh, but I think it's going to be well worth the time. So so mine got completely reset, um, you know, before I jumped into the first mission today. I took 10 minutes real quick before I started actually playing it just to reset uh, relatively close to what I had set before. Um, some mods did disappear, some changed a little bit, and of course there are new ones. But the fact that we're no longer relegated to constantly having to spend a bunch of our higher spec stuff to swap over the class type, uh, now we can on the fly just swap in any type of mod on any of the piece of gear that we want uh that is a major major quality of life change much 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 for the better in my opinion so uh what else has changed well that's kind of the major aspects if we drill over into the weapons for example you'll see that there's really no changes here in fact drilling into osseo striga was a bad example if i drill in to um just the standard non-exotic, you'll notice it's still set up exactly how I had it set up before. It was already set on a range masterwork, and this has all of the same type of mods that I had access to prior. Nothing changed on the setup here. It's just on the armor, um, but the change is big enough that it's a very excellent and welcome change for my money. Then you'll notice on the right side of the screen over here, there's another tap uh, right on the D-pad. This is for mod customization. So this is where you can drill in and at a quick glance without having to constantly back and forth open all your gear, you can see the exact mods that you have put on your equipment. So yeah, these are kind of the main things, but over here on the right tab, um, you can kind of at a glance see all of the mods that you have set up on your character. Uh, so yeah, this is handy. It can let you very quickly see if you miss something, forgot to save something. Uh, and of course, we can also see the same thing on our weapons just by toggling the bumpers up top. You'll see that left, right uh, on the weapons. Not as big of a deal, uh, but I can see exactly the mods that I have put on these. You'll notice I'm still set up on this flame focus build with incandescent because that works very great synergetically with this build. Osteo is what Osteo is. But that's kind of the big ones that I wanted to mention to you um, for just kind of big, big, big kind of bottom up changes that are going to directly impact how we play this game. Now, the next thing you'll notice if I hit back, you'll see that it says tracked guardian ranks respect and tells you all these kind of different things you can do and you'll see it shows the d-pad up down arrows that's where we can scroll through bounties on the bottom tracked quests in the middle and then kind of these tracked ranks and this is related to our journey and when i logged in you saw that it gave the option journey or continue the adventure or whatever verbiage they use i don't really recall but if we hold down back and scroll through we have the store, same place like we always do, same stuff there. Here we have our normal kind of seasonal rank rewards that we can track through. Uh, quest still in the same place, no change there. Map is still the same. Destination is still the same. Neptune is the one new one. But then we pop back over to here, over to the helm. Let me just kind of click on this. One thing you will notice is the helm looks basically empty and devoid of stuff. Basically completely cleaned out. Um, here, the war table, again, vendor challenges. That is another vendor point. But all of the prior season stuff, all up and down those hallways, all gone. Completely gone. Uh, cleaned out, you still do have access to the old Quest Archive terminal and the vault as well as your post box. So not as big of a reason to be coming back and forth to the helm, but if you wanted to, it's still there. So that's a pretty big change. Um, I have not checked out the rest of the locations because I assume they are mostly the same, but there is one quick fast travel point on the EDZ now, Earth the Farm. 
when you started Destiny 2 in the very beginning, this is that area where you dropped in, and if you were a warlock, you would have met Ikora for the first time. Uh, I forget what the other tracks were, uh, but this is a fast travel point to there. Uh, Marasov is up there right now, as well as Devrim K. Everything else basically still looks the same. Um, there's, you know, related to the current season, battleground arena so i'm sure these are all over the other world maps if i drilled into it but this is one that i know for a fact is tied to the active season because this is one that i need to do on a separate quest line but that's basically what's changed here um that's effectively it everything else looks the exact same as it did in the prior season but those changes are rather noteworthy so the big takeaway here is that's where the things are on Neptune. Don't forget to run over to the tower to grab your new aspects for the three uh, light subclasses. And then if you need access to the farm for those um, uh, quest lines, they'll tell you anyway, EDZ and also Battlegrounds over there. Uh, the next thing I wanted to point out is uh, if we hit start on the Xbox, uh, beyond our character, the inventory still looks the same, but when you first log in, you'll notice that it's whittled down. I am missing a ton of stuff I guess they just got rid of. It's not coming back, so it doesn't apply. So it's no longer taking up space in my inventory, which is great. Because frankly, it gets uh, a little irritating when you have all this stuff and you never know if you're going to need it. And you're constantly having to decide what to break down and whatnot. So they made that decision for me. So that's nice. Um, popping over to the left of the character tab is this journey tab. Now this is another big change. And you scroll through. And it kind of gives you a rank based on what you've done throughout your time in Destiny. So I loaded in at level 6 as a veteran because I've played all of the seasons. Um, and I am actively working towards uh, this elite rank, rank 7. And you can tap A on any of these. Say you're starting behind where I am. Just tap A and it'll show you exactly what you need to do to gain rank progress. So I've already completed these. And if I scroll in uh, to Lightfall, these are the only three that show right here. Then you can scroll down into Season of Defiance. These are still things that you can continue to do, it looks like, by doing whatever it tells you to continue along that path. Artifact bonus. So I'll get another pip as soon as I get my next power bonus on the artifact up. Nightfall. Uh, exactly what it sounds like scroll all the way through it'll tell you what it wants you to do to get credit for these challenges and then bob's your uncle you will get credit and move on to the next tier and so on and so forth and it kind of shows you in a bar form over here and as you complete these things it'll pop up and kind of flash at you so you can drill in to you know here just like the old system, it's just way easier to see now. It's not as cluttered. It's much larger. And it'll pop up with a little plus sign. Drill into it. Grab it as always at a list. It'll give you credit. And then over here is where you can see credit and progress towards various titles. So they definitely clean that up. So all in all, yeah, they, they just made it a lot less messy it's a lot more streamlined so some of these kind of uh, new light walkthrough videos that i've done in the past several weeks and months um it's going to be different now so this will i'm not necessarily going to make an amended version of the new light guide because it'll be obvious when you get in and you're looking at these new things but just know that it is a little bit different i think the changes are mostly for the better that's my opinion and of course seasonal challenges this is related to as we're going through the current active season in lightfall uh same place we can track our progress this is where we pick up the big upgrades for the vendor to unlock the new uh rank rewards as we're going through so yeah it's just a cleaned up space um, the collections all of this still basically the same we can scroll through see all of these stat trackers metals patterns catalyst lore um, lore this is one I knew I already picked up a piece and I was looking for it uh, I haven't yet drilled it out but if you're looking to clear out the notification when it tells you that's the screen it's on still follows the same logic pop in hit the plus back out and that is maybe a little bit harder to see but that's where it is stat trackers this is where we can still track all of this stuff again same as always and these are always full for me because uh, they take forever to clear out i just find it annoying doesn't really apply uh, i reset my clan most of my clan is still quite big uh, but you know i do so little with them i backed out so 
maybe I'll set up another one. I don't know. If I get other people, I'm mostly a solo player anyway, so not the end of the world. But all in all, um, it's just a lot cleaner design, a lot cleaner look. But pretty significant changes. So that's kind of the main takeaway here in the menus. Obviously, if we're in our character screen, down again, this is all still the exact same. No changes here. So that is the bulk of what I wanted to point out. Uh, just when you first get in, uh, really, really important to not forget if you've got the funds for it, the glimmer, uh, pop over to the tower, see Ikora, get your six new aspects on the three different light uh, subclasses two for each for a total of six and uh, don't forget to take the time to look through all of the new mods and to set up your builds and save it in the menu by hitting left on the d-pad i am going to go back to the tower personally grab some uh, different weapons and gear and i'm going to set up some new custom builds custom loadouts but my first impressions are favorable and i just wanted to tack on kind of a hey here's the major things that i noticed that are new um, i already got a taste of the strand subclass it seemed really cool it'll be nice to get that unlocked fully to go uh, see how all the aspects work together and really kind of make it my own uh, but yeah so far so good guys I like the changes um, you know we'll see what we think of the story that's kind of the main complaint everybody had but I'm going to formulate my own opinion my first impression a few hours in I like it I like it so hopefully this was at least somewhat helpful guys big takeaway here grab your new aspects set up your loadouts uh, jump back to the vault where wherever you want to pull them to get those set up and saved so it can rotate freely uh, in and out of rotation for you and uh, make sure to take your time read through all the mods and get those set up as well anyway guys that's going to do it for today short and sweet i appreciate you checking in we will catch you on the next one